Hey everyone, now we're going to move on to part two of our Pharmacology Know Your Endings video. If you didn't see part one, I don't know why you clicked here first, but just go watch part one. It's got antihypertensives and all the drugs you need to know. Um, here, part two, we're going to talk about antibiotics. Love antibiotics, they're so fun. Now we're just going to talk about the main ones you need to know and some really important differences. But there's a part one, and then there's a part three after this. So if you just got here first, maybe you should see that one. But whatever you want, it's fine. I don't mind. I'm Kendall Wyatt, the content director here at Pygmonic, and that's all we got to go. Let's get started. So part two, antibiotics. We're going to talk about different antibiotics. Inside of here, we're going to, again, show you everything you're seeing is all the pictures from our Pygmonic learning system, which you can go and sign up for free and check out all out, or of course buy, which would be a better idea to subscribe. But here's our antibiotic guy with our uh, bacteria static or bacteria being shocked to help you remember it, because we use images to help you remember everything you need to know. Now, we have literally over 150 medications alone. I think we're up to 190 medications in literally every product where we have medications. So if you have trouble memorizing things like antibiotics, uh, you need to go check out Pygmonic. You won't, you won't regret it. It's definitely where we're at. So let's jump right into some antibiotics. Now, the first one I want to talk about are tetracyclines. I love tetracyclines. Now, everyone, every time I always talk to somebody like this, I'm like, oh, let's talk about tetracyclines. One of the tetracyclines is tetracycline. And they're like, what are you talking about? Yeah, okay, I know. I didn't make this up, okay? They're tetracyclines. The one of the tetracyclines is tetracycline. <laughs> uh, who thought of that, right? The other one's doxycycline. But what's important is you can remember tetracyclines by remembering the ending cycline by this cycle. We got these beautiful little cycles here. You can just remember that. And, of course, to help you remember tetracyclines, we have a tetris cycle. So, I mean, that seems to make sense. Um, but more importantly, I just I love the next one. I just love this one right here. Oh, this is my favorite character. One of my favorite Pygmonic characters, which is a Dotson cycling. <laughs> Doxycycline. That's right. So here we've got our cycle again. But we've got a, a, a Dotson cycle. Oh, my God. A dog riding a tetris cycle. Okay, well, whatever. We have some, some people think of this here. They work here. They're crazy. But it helps you remember, and that's what the point is. So tetracyclines, really common antibiotic for questions that I see. Um, I see lots of questions on tetracyclines. What are When I say tetracyclines, what's the one thing you need to be worried about? You should be thinking about, or you should think about considerations, things you need to know about that drug. I mean, you should have a couple of them, like right there on the tip of your tongue. You should just be spitting it out and, you know, just like right there. What is it? Ah. Mm. Take a drink from my magic cup. I... I get a few cents every time I take a drink from that if you missed it earlier. So you're just going to have to deal with that. I'm sorry. If it makes you angry, you can just turn it off. Just click close. I don't mind. I'll still be here. Tetracyclines. What are the things you need to know? Well, you need to be thinking about a couple of things really important. You should be thinking about bones. You should be thinking about calcium. You should be thinking about cations. Oh, Kendall, cations? What is that? Why do I need to think about that? Chemistry crap. I don't care about it. I don't want to see again. Well, with tetracyclines, if you can just remember bones, calcium, cations, then you can remember everything you need to know with tetracyclines. Now, this is our tetracycline pygmonic here. Here's our you know, two pygmonics we have for this. But there's a couple really important things. The number one is that you don't want to take tetracyclines. You would not want your patient to take tetracyclines along with milk, iron, or antacids, which contain things like magnesium or calcium, right? What? Right? Why? Well, those medications uh, tetracycline binds to those ions, those cations. It binds to them and keeps them from being absorbed. Essentially makes them useless. There's no point in taking it. Really, really important. So for the same reason, because it binds to the calcium, we don't give tetracyclines to children under age eight, of eight years old or pregnant women because it keeps fetal bones from developing. It, it prevents that hyaline cartilage from really forming nice bones when those little babies are developing. And as you're growing in those core years of growing. I, I didn't get to grow when I was a kid. I don't know what happened. I I mean, I'm just living the life of the short people over here. I know the camera makes me feel tall, but I'm just not. But it, this is a separate topic. Anyway, tetracyclines. Don't give tetracyclines to kids. No. Not going to happen. That's a question. Don't do it. Answer is no. Now we got over that. The last one, and super important, um, almost when you think of antibiotics in general, you should be worrying about photosensitivity, but tetracyclines especially. Um, tetracyclines are no for photosensitivity, so make sure they're sun protection, sunscreen. We've got all that here up here. You've seen in the top left, this little pygmonic. You've got a little bacteria with his putting some sunscreen on his face. How can you unsee that? I know it's weird. It's okay. It helps. We know that the weird things really help you memorize, and that's, what, that's why our product is research proven to help you. And it's crazy images work. I, trust me, I know it's weird, but it's fun, kind of, right? Aren't you having fun? 
So don't give tetracyclines uh, for those reasons. Now, when we think about um, tetracyclines, you know, you always want to never give expired medications. I mean, we always worry about that. And tetracyclines are one of the ones that are the really worst ones for expired medications. Just a side note. Not in the pygmonic, but it's really important. So um, for that same reason, we see um, tetracyclines cause this yellowing of a teeth. Again, I forgot to mention that, but that's just another kind of important point to cause yellow teeth and brittle bones. So um, the next type of medication, I, you know, I just feel like I skip over this one every time. So easy. Uh, but uh, penicillins. Penicillins and insulin. There's different types of penicillins. There's penicillins, there's amino penicillins, there's antipsychotic penicillins, um, and um, with penicillins, remember they end in cillin. But I got the hiccups already again. Every time I do this, I take a drink, I talk a lot, and then I get the hiccups. I'm sorry. Cillins. You want to worry about allergy. Um, you probably are already screaming at the screen. Just say allergy already. Just say it. I know you're going to say it, and that's right. I did there. I said it. You want to worry about allergy, um, and it's really common, um, and it's just something that um, you need to be aware of. Penicillin's old drug, good drug, sometimes seeing a lot of resistance, but remember, um, common with a drug allergy. So we've got, oh, forgot to open up. There's our armor ox for amoxicillin and our pencil villain, which is penicillin, one of our fun characters there. Um, so here's our picmonics for those. Here we've got inside our little allergy alligator to help you remember. Um, and remember, you know, you don't need to, depending on what level you're at, but Penicillin really only works for gram-positive bacteria. So we got our little graham cracker uh, positive angel guy, and that's just what you need to know. So remember with, when you talk about allergies and things, to always identify, tell your patient to make sure they wear an aller, you know, a wristband for um, if to making sure they have an um, emergency alert band or um, allergy ID band or whatever. I have mine on my iPhone. I just hope somebody, I don't get a 70-year-old paramedic doesn't know how to open it. Now, the next type of medication are aminoglycosides. I see so many people freak out when I say aminoglycosides, name them. Give me the aminoglycosides. And they're like, oh, I don't know. I don't know what to do. Aminoglycosides are really easy. And let's, this is probably one that you can learn a lot of drugs really fast. So when I talk about aminoglycosides, the first thing you should be thinking about are mice. Yeah, for mycin. Aminoglycosides end in mycin, spelled with a Y, spelled with an I, kind of the same. But even more, when I say aminoglycosides, and I show you our Amigo Glider here, I know, Amigo Glider with his mice for mycin, you're going to remember aminoglycosides. Now, when I say aminoglycosides, can you name them all? Mm, I don't know, let's see in a sec. Because um, you can really just remember it with a mnemonic. Now, what, I have these on this image, this slide here for you, so you can remember that these are not included. These are the weirdos. They're kind of the weirdo ones, which we're going to talk about next. Glendomycin, vancomycin, azithromycin. Now, I'm going to step on a soapbox here and say, it is not, there's no O in this at the end. It's not myosin, it's azithromycin. Okay, there, there you go. That's all I'm going to say, but I'll correct you if you say it wrong. Yeah, I'm talking about you. Glendomycin, there you go. We said it. We said it together. Say it out loud with me. Thank you. Let's move on. So when I talk about aminoglycosides, um, what, are the, what are the aminoglycosides? Well, I'm just going to show you here is our picmonic on it, and I'm going to help you remember this mice ends club. Well, when you think about the mice ends, this little strip club that come in with our, with our, with our mouse here, I want you to remember gnats, G-N-A-T-S, because you can remember here is right there they are. It's, I got them in the perfect order for you, G-N-A-T-S. See those gnats flying around the screen? Gnats, or genats, if you want to just say it like that, but I'm going to make fun of you again. So here we got our genats, right? Gnats. The G is silent. That's right. Gentamycin, neomycin, amicacin, terbromycin, streptomycin. Yes. Got him. Yes, amicacin is weird, but that's why we have the image. So when we look at the aminoglycosides, here you can see our gentleman mouse for gentamycin. Here you can see our neon mouse for neomycin. Our moccasin-wearing mouse for amicacin. Our, to our to cobra mouse, sorry, for tobramycin. And this stripper mouse for streptomycin. So you can remember them all right here inside of this mice ends club with the gnats. Really easy to remember. Now when you think about aminoglycosides, they're really kind of toxic medications. I mean, they're pretty potent things. Um, and what do we worry about? When, we, when I'm giving any type of medication that can cause toxicity, what am I going to watch? I'm going to monitor the levels. I'm going to do peak and trough. So here we've got our peak and trough here. Peak and trough. Now with aminoglycosides in general, there are two big things you got to you need to be spitting out those side effects. And if you've caught on to how we're doing this now, you probably are already saying it out loud because you can see it in the image. Good for you. Your eyes are awake. I'm glad.
But we worry about with aminoglycosides. We measure peak and trough because of renal toxicity. We've got our toxic green glow kidney and our toxic green glow ear for ototoxicity. Now remember, from back from our diuretics, I'm talking about loop diuretics, toxic green glow ear, um, ototoxicity, we're going to worry about tinnitus, ringing of the ears. You're going to worry about it. That's going to be the clue that this is going to be a patient that may be toxic. The next type of medications are macrolides. Now, I see a lot, of, a lot of students really just mess up when I see aminoglycosides and macrolides rather than giving them an actual type of drug. You don't want to mix these up. Um, really important to make sure you know the difference. So macrolides, I'm going to help you remember them because you can remember the macaroni lights here in this image, and you can remember these throwing mice because where else do you want to throw mice except for, I mean, every time. I, who wants to? Well, I mean, I know there's some weirdos out there that have pet rats. I have seen that, actually. It weirds me out. i am be honest. I got a dog. You've probably seen Stitch. That's as far as I'm going. I mean, I had an iguana once when I was a kid, but I'm kidding. I had a pet skunk when I was a kid and ferrets, but I never had a, mou a mouse or a rat. Actually, that's a lie. We had, we had some mice in our house. <laughs> they weren't pets, though. They weren't very nice. Anyway, so throwing mice. Throw mycin. So, again, throw mycin, not throw myosin, throw mycin. So azithromycin, clarithromycin, erythromycin, there are three. There are three, and you can remember them again with this ACE, A-C-E. See, I put them in order for you. Isn't that so nice? And if you're a little bit more of advanced, you're not, maybe you're doing, you know, a higher practitioner level, you can remember the P450, um, uh, the fact that they cause P450 interactions in this exact order, too. Azithromycin, not a lot of interaction. Clarithromycin, medium. Erythromycin, a lot of interaction with P450. Side note. Um, not so important at the nursing level. So what's important to know with macrolides? When I say let's give a macrolide, what are you going to be taking azithromycin for? Well, you probably remember it because it's often called a Z-pack. We're giving a Z-pack azithromycin. If I give you azithromycin, it's usually for an upper respiratory infection or a URI. We've got our lungs with, filled with bacteria here in this image. So you can remember, what's the big thing you need to worry about, though? Side effect-wise, when I say, ooh, with macrolides, what is it? Well, azithromycin, not so much, but eryth erythromycin, which is, again, more toxic or has more side effects, we worry about QT, prolong pre QT prolongation. There we go. Said it. Thank you. Um, QT prolongation. So we've got our QT, QT heart here stretched out with this big long tail um, because it can prolong that QT interval. So if it's prolonged, if it's over the 0 0.4, 0 0.4 seconds, we know that that's a prolonged QT interval and it can cause R on T phenomenon, sudden death, arrhythmias, lots of things there we want to worry about. Not so good. Um, the other thing when we give um, macrolides, now all antibiotics can call GI distress. We've got our little GI distress guy here in the bottom left. But macrolides um, often cause, uh, or you're at risk for C. difficile. Uh, C. diff, very lovely smelling um, diarrhea, if you've ever encountered it. You know, it's just like, yeah, I'm going to get me a C. diff scented perfume, right? I know that's you. And you'll, you're going to think back to this if you haven't smelled it, and then you're going to be like, yeah, okay. That was funny. You're not laughing now, but you will later. Just kidding. It's disgusting. Okay, so the next medication type I want to talk about are cephalosporins. Now, cephalosporins are lots of different types of medications. There are five generations of cephalosporins. Now, cephalosporins, you can remember by not a drug ending, but a, a drug um, prefix. And that's ceph, C-E-F, cephalosporins, ceph. So, of course, we have our chef spore head here inside of Pygmonic. So our chef spore head, isn't he so cute right there? Just little chef spore head, so cute. But you can remember him because of the chefs. So inside of Pygmonic, we have lots of different chefs. We have our uh, cephalexin, our chef flexing. We have our ceftriaxone, our chef with three axes. Um, and we have a cefotaxime, our chef taxes. Um, so many different types of uh chefs inside of Pygmonic. Again, five different generations of cephalosporins. And really, they start out by, you know, really working with gram-positive organisms and working all the way up to really some really big gun cephalosporins, septaraline um, as a fifth generation cephalosporin. New, um, the, the higher generation usually newer and cover a lot more organisms. Now, what do you need to know about cephalosporins? Well, there's a few things. Cephalosporins are, oh, I thought I had my image in here. I guess I don't. Cephalosporins um, are really commonly given to a patient with a penicillin allergy. But what do we worry about when we give a patient with cephalosporin penicillin? We give a, let me start over. What do we worry about when we give a patient with cephalosporin? We're going to 
ask them if they have any drug allergies, but are you allergic to penicillin? And they're going to say, yeah, I am. I got a little weird rash, and it went away. Or they're going to say, I had a full-on anaphylactic reaction. I had trouble breathing. I had to be hospitalized. They had to give me epinephrine. So with cephalosporins, there's a 10% chance of a cross-reactivity, a small chance that you could be allergic to cephalosporins as well because they're also a beta-lactam drug. That's how the medication is made. Now with that, um, what that means is typically if a patient had an anaphylactic reaction, a cephalosporin is a no-go. If they just had a rash, you're going to warn them about the reaction, and then you're going to give it anyway. But you're always going to ask, have you ever had a reaction to any types of medications? When you're given these things, it's really important to ask. But you want to ask them what type of reaction. So with cephalosporins, um, that's about it um, as far as big, big things, uh, mainstream things. And, of course, there's several different little things for all the types. Now, the next type of medication are fluoroquinolones. Spell that five times fast, right? I can never get it right. I don't know. Thank God for spell check. Anyway, fluoroquinolones. Now, fluoroquinolones, you can remember from our, by our Flower Queen character here. Isn't she just so pretty? Flower Queen, she's just so special. Smiling face and everything. But Flower Queen here for fluoroquinolones have what type of drug ending? And that's floxacin. So we've got our flock of oxen. Flock of oxen, flower queen, fluoroquinolones, ciprofloxin, levofloxacin, moxifloxin, oxifloxin. There's several different floxacins in there. Uh, so I just got three here. But you're going to see cipro or ciprofloxacin given very often. Um, so fluoroquinolones are a little bit differently on kind of where the where they target per se. Um, some of them are a little bit different, but a lot of them work great in urine. Um, and levofloxin is a lot of a respiratory. So here's our actual pygmonic. Um, you can actually see how the pygmonic looks. We have backlists on the left-hand side over here and how the actual image works. But what's important to know for fluoroquinolones? Well, I mean, I have it here on the screen. You can just look on the left-hand side. Actually, I don't have all of it here, but it's kind of, I can't scroll because I just took a screenshot. Anyway, with fluoroquinolones, what's important? Well, you can remember everything here, flock of oxen. We got our um, flock of oxen in here. But what do you need to know? Well, if you're, uh, there's a couple big ones. With fluoroquinolones, we worry about Achilles tendon rupture. Is it super documented that this has happened tons of times, and does it happen very often? No. But if you have a patient who would have any kind of Achilles tendon pain, and they're on a fluoroquinolone, stop the medication immediately. Notify the physician or stop the medication, switch to something else. Um, the other one is um, not taking milk and antacids. Because if you take milk and antacids with a fluoroquinolone, these medications, especially tetracyclines and fluoroquinolones, very often they cause an upset stomach. You know, they cause GI distress, our GI distress guy. But very often people believe that they can just take my medication with a glass of milk because glass of milk neutralizes all that GI acid, right? And I can just, it won't upset my stomach. But that's absolutely a no-no, again, with fluoroquinolones. Um, milk and antacids actually inactivate the drug, causing it to not be able to be absorbed. Again, rendering it ineffective. So the other thing with fluoroquinolones that's the same as tetracyclines is um, photosensitivity. And we've got our little camera with the crying sensitive tears to help you remember that. Um, as well, we don't want to give um, uh, fluoroquinolones to children. But most importantly, don't forget about this one, really kind of an important one I'm seeing a little bit more often, not to give fluoroquinolones to patients with myasthenia gravis because um, it can cause an exacerbation of symptoms. So fluoroquinolones, remember, floxacin, and flocavoxin, and don't give them uh, milk or antacids along with it and Achilles tendon rupture. So uh, before we go to that, we're actually going to move on to part three. So stick with us. It's going to be in the next video in the playlist. So if you landed on this one by accident or just happened to go here, there's one before this, which is antihypertensives. And then we're going to move on to part three, which are psych and some other medications. Again, learning more farm drug endings. So if you just tuned in, you don't know us, we're not best friends, you can subscribe. You can click that subscribe button there or there or there, wherever it is. Um, click that. It's really important makes me feel good. I don't cry myself to sleep at night. Uh, but you can sign up for a free Picmonic account and see all of these images with everything else all in an interactive system at Picmonic.com. Um, it's really important that you do it. So share this with your friends or, you know, and, and if you're angry, you, you just have mean things to say, just don't. Just keep them to yourself. Thanks. We'll see you over in the next video, part three, um, psych and kind of a hodgepodge of other medications. I'm Kendall Wyatt. We'll see you over there.